So, uh, when you want to do GPU computing these days, in practice with real world applications on supercomputers, you either use CUDA or use OpenCL. I know there are upcoming standards. Unfortunately, we scientists are kind of behind, like five years behind the world, because our clusters have all GCCs, our cluster have, have drivers they have, and we can use what we can use. So, uh, if you pick CUDA, you're basically limited to the proprietary uh, ecosystem, unless you use Clang, so you have some shiny part of open source under the large sea of proprietary software. If you use OpenCL, you're doing slightly better. Uh, you can either use AMD proprietary compiler and driver, or you can finally use uh, Clang and libclc and Misa as a completely open source stack. And our work is going to focus on improving that stack. So, uh, as I said, there is either CUDA or OpenCL. In case of CUDA, we have over 300 applications that are industry ready, used, and uh, available. NVIDIA is actually very proud of this number. And it's also proud of another number, and that's their market share. There is a great chance that your compute cluster at the university has uh, CUDA GPUs. On the OpenCL side, we are not doing, unfortunately, so well, but still, there are uh, roughly 70 applications listed on Wikipedia. There are probably more that, I, that Wikipedia doesn't know about. And out of those 70, there are 30 in the scientific computing category. Uh, a couple of them are benchmarks and toys and small applications, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, when you look at those 30 scientific applications, some of them are actually very popular. Uh, the most popular uh, molecular dynamics code that simulates uh, molecules uh, moving and stuff like that uh, is Gromax. It actually supports OpenCL since 2015. And also LAMPS, which is the second most popular tool. Uh, VMD is just a visualization tool. Uh, both of them support OpenCL as well as other APIs. Uh, so, our work focused on getting Gromax, LAMPS, and two more tools, OpenMM and ASL, running on Radeon open source driver. Uh, there are actually two drivers for Radeons, both of them work today. Uh, one of them is AMD's proprietary driver I already mentioned, which will be open source soon and was supposed to be open source soon for last year and a half. So, soon. Uh, the other was uh, open source from the beginning. It's based on MISA and LLVM, and if you install Linux, you, you basically get it. That's a big advantage for, you know, uh, user deployment. Uh, our work is focused on improving the driver, the libraries, the compiler, and no changes or minor changes to the apps and libraries. Unless they are violating the OpenCL standard, we don't change the apps. We want to support as much of the OpenCL standard into the compiler, into the driver, into the libraries. So we don't want to, you know, reduce the apps just because we don't support something. Most of the time, this is mo missing math functions in libclc or missing OpenCL 1.2 API calls. I have to thank ARM again for providing OpenCL 2.0 in Clang. Uh, Misa doesn't do so well. We are, st we are still stuck at uh, OpenCL 1.1. Uh, the other thing that we do are bug fixes. So, uh, yeah, there are plenty of those. Uh, the results are actually quite promising. In Gromax, in terms of kernel execution time, the open source driver is uh, beating the proprietary driver if the number of launches is small enough. So with large systems, the kernel execution time is relatively big compared to the kernel launch time, and there we are actually beating the proprietary driver. Unfortunately, the same doesn't hold for OpenMM and LAMPS. We are, we are actually behind the proprietary driver in LAMPS by four times. Uh, somebody should look into improving that. Maybe, maybe that will happen in the future. However, since AMD is unpredictable genius child that does some things very good and some things very bad, in ASL we are not beating AMD, we are actually beating it by 10 times. So you can see that the last test, we actually have 10 times better performance. So as I, you know, the results are kind of uh, all over the, the scale, right? Uh, there is other tools that we would also like to get working. Blender is a great example. There is Beagle, which is phylogenetics library used by some of my colleagues. There is CLBLAS and CLFFT, which would enable us to run other uh, applications that depend on them. There is uh, other scientific applications which have OpenCL support, which a number of people have told me, I would use it if it worked, but if it doesn't work, you know, I'm not a driver programmer. I'm not going to stop my science to learn this stuff. 
and there is a number of benchmarks and hopefully another apps or libs you might care about, which I would like to hear about. And with that, I would like to thank the following people and thank you for your attention.